Commerce, yeah, it's sure. The question, first of all, President Macron, regarding what you said on the occasion of the press conference together with Chancellor Merkel. Do you still hope that President Trump, or did you still hope that President Trump could change his mind regarding the Paris Accord? And now, President Trump, is it possible for you to the Paris Accord and change your mind? Next, regarding your relation, how would you describe it today? What about the dinner tonight? Is it going to be a dinner between friends? Well, regarding climate, well, we have a number of disagreements which are in particular due to the commitments of, uh, taken by President Trump vis-à-vis -vis his, uh, um, uh, the, during the presidential campaign, so did I. I'm aware of how important that is, but we therefore talked about our disagreement. And we actually discussed the matter uh, even before President Trump reached the decision. Next, should that have an impact on the discussion we're having on all other topics? No, absolutely not. This is the reason why we share um, the same views and some uh, major common goals on many other topics or all other topics which we've been discussing today. We shall um, move forward together. Next, and well, of course, the, the President Trump will um, tell you about it, but he's made a number of commitments, and we're going to be working together. And my willingness is to continue to um, work with the, the United States and President Trump on this very major topic. I understand that it's important to save jobs. Um, that being said, we shall um, lead the United States of America and work on what is uh, its roadmap and continue to talk about it. So today, there's nothing new and unprecedented, otherwise we would have told you about it, but I believe there is a joint willingness to continue to talk about this and uh, try and find the best possible uh, agreement. As far as I'm concerned, I'm very much, I remain extremely attached to the framework of the Paris Accord, which has been a major international breakthrough, and it is um, within that framework that I'm uh, um, working on uh, our priorities, including for the European Union. Lastly, um, as you know, I never very much want to comment uh, who we are and uh, what we are doing personally, but I can tell you that uh, this evening uh, at the Eiffel Tower it will be a dinner between friends because we are the representatives of two uh, countries which have been allies forever and because we've been able to build a strong relation which is dear to me because it matters a great deal for both our countries it will therefore give me great pleasure to have dinner to, you know, together with you tonight i think that i can reiterate we have a um, a very good relationship a good friendship and we look forward to dinner tonight at the eiffel tower that'll be something special and um yeah, I mean, something could happen with respect to the Paris Accord. We'll see what happens. But uh, we will talk about that over the coming period of time. And if it happens, that'll be wonderful. And if it doesn't, that'll be okay, too. But we'll see what happens. But we did discuss many things today, including the ceasefire in Syria. We discussed uh, the Ukraine. We discussed a lot of different topics. Uh, we briefly hit on the Paris Accord. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, your FBI nominee said if someone in a campaign got an email about Russia, like the one that your son Don Jr. received, that they should alert the FBI rather than accept that meeting. Is he wrong? Also, were you misled by your team in not knowing about this meeting? And Mr. President, thank you very much. You have heard President Trump say that it may have been Russia, it may have been others who interfered with the U.S. election. Is President Trump taking a hard enough line on Russia, as you see it? Merci. Well, I'll start off by saying, first of all, uh, I believe that we will have a great FBI director. I think he's doing really well. And uh, we're very proud of that choice. I think I've done a great service to the country by choosing him. He, uh, he will make us all proud, and I think someday we'll see that, and hopefully someday soon. So we're very proud of him. Uh, as far as my son is concerned, my son is a wonderful young man. 
He took a meeting with a Russian lawyer, not a government lawyer, but a Russian lawyer. Uh, it was a short meeting. Uh, it was a meeting that um, went very, very quickly, very fast. Two other people in the room, they, I guess one of them left almost immediately, and the other one was uh, not really focused on the meeting. I do think this, I think from a practical standpoint, uh, most people would have taken that meeting. It's called opposition research or even research into your politics. I've had many people call up, oh, gee, we have information on this factor or this person or, frankly, Hillary. Uh, that's very standard in politics. Politics is not the nicest business in the world, but it's very standard where they have information and you take the information. In the case of Don, uh, he listened. Uh, I guess they talked about, as I see it, they talked about adoption and some things. Uh, adoption wasn't even a part of the campaign, uh, but nothing happened from the meeting. Zero happened from the meeting. And honestly, I think the press made a very big deal over something that really a lot of people would do. Now, the uh, lawyer that went to the meeting, I see the also of Congress. So I said her visa or passport to the country was approved by General Lynch. Now, maybe that's wrong. I just heard that a little while ago, but it's a little surprised to hear that. So she was here because of Lynch. Uh, so, again, I have a son who's a great young man, he's a fine person. He took a meeting with the lawyer from Russia, uh, and I came to the meeting. I think it's a meeting that most people in politics probably would have taken. Mr. President? Yes, to, to answer your question, I would not... Bien, pour répondre à votre question, je ne vais pas euh, me mêler à la politique interne des États-Unis. Relationship with Russia. President Trump had two hours, more than two hours meeting with President Putin during the past G20. So that's G20 and myself had two hours meeting with President Trump. The first one in the time zone, the DNC, so it's very important. We have a lot of differences, obviously, with Russia. But in the current environment, especially in its intensity, what we're doing is trying to balance the struggle between the social security of Russia and the social security of Russia. As long as the U.S. is not engaged in the struggle, and as long as the U.S. is not engaged in the struggle, and as long as the U.S. is not engaged in Ceasefire fire that now has lasted for, I guess, was right almost five days. And well, five days is a long time to stay silent, and as a result of confrontation with a country. So during that five-day five period, all I can say to our people, we shot some fire in very early days. We shot some fire in very early days. dialogue, we were able to have a ceasefire, and it's going to go on for a while. And frankly, we're working on a second ceasefire in a very uh, rough part of the Third question from BFM TV. A question to President Macron. Uh, you went to Lausanne in order to support Paris. Directly with Bashar al-Assad in the negotiation that you mentioned. You've mentioned a friend, Jim. Uh, we told you that Paris is no longer Paris. Um, you were implying at the time that Paris was not safe anymore. You've also said that France and Germany are infected by terrorism and, quote, it's their fault because they let people enter the territory. Uh, those are very strong words. Uh, would you repeat them today? And do you still believe that France is not able to fight terrorism on its own territory? Thank you. You better let me answer that one first. That's a beauty. <laughs> He's the one that asked the question. That wasn't even one of my picks. Uh, you know what? It's going to be just fine because you have a great president. You have somebody that's going to run this country, right? And I would be willing to bet because I think this is one of the great cities, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And uh, you have a great leader now. You have a great president. You have a tough president. He's not going to be easy on people that are breaking the laws and people that show this tremendous violence. So I really have a feeling that uh, you're going to have a very, very peaceful and beautiful Paris. And I'm coming back. You better do a good job, please. Otherwise, you're going to make me look very bad. <laughs> and you're always welcome. Thank you. Sur la première question, j'ai répondu à ce sujet. Regarding the first question, like I said, I believe that the discussions that we've had today is the proper answer to terrorism. And the right answer is strength and cooperation between our services. Um, 
never-ending fight against terrorists, no matter where they are. This is what I was referring to. This is what we are working on actively together. So, in this respect, there is no difference. And no gap between the French and the American positions. When um, I have something to say, I say it clearly, and I do say who I'm uh, aiming at. And when I refer to those who have been um, my opponents in uh, the French uh, political battle, I also mention the names. So uh, let us not mix that up everything. And regarding the fight against terrorism, I think that the right approach is to have a strengthened cooperation in the field of intelligence, is also to um, be working together on all the theaters of operation where we are, and I think that the decisions we've reached, they will enable us to do more. Next, your question regarding Bashar al-Assad, which is an important one. Let me put it simply. Indeed, we've, um, we now have a new approach of uh, Syria, uh, because we want some results, and we want to be closely working to... Of the Syrian opposition and people with different backgrounds, and 